Are you concerned about fine lines and wrinkles in your forehead? What about smile lines or hollowing under the eyes? All of these problems and more can be fixed using injectables. Today we'll watch as two women have fillers and Botox injected into their face, here on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world and now I'm living And the good just gets better, keeps a giving Not even close to the end, it's just beginning Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah And that's a good, I won't even worry anymore Took all my care, still can kick them all out the door Go on and try, come and tell me what you're waiting for Move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah Welcome to The Younger You. Today on the show we're talking about injectables. Young healthy skin is filled with a naturally hydrating substance called HA. As we age, the amount of HA in our skin decreases, causing the skin to lose structure and volume. Injectables can be used in a way of replacing the missing HA in your skin. But before we get to our patients today, let's talk to their cosmetic surgeon, Dr. Thompson. How are you? Hi, Troy. I'm doing well. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. I want to talk about what is HA? Well, HA is one of many substances that's found in the skin. It stands for hyaluronic acid, and it's something that we lose over time, along with collagen and fat and other things that, that cause volume loss over okay, time. Okay, well, what factors cause us to lose HA? Well, it's mainly just the aging process. There's a naturally occurring process that happens over time, and as the body ages and the cells age, the the components and the natural makeup of the body changes. So what are some of the common areas where wrinkles are formed? Anywhere uh, on the face that is a moving part is where wrinkles form. And so mm -hmm. we have muscles all throughout our face and these muscles cause us to be able to interact with people, to smile, to frown, to, to have expression and emotion. But over time, over many years of using these muscles, we develop lines in our skin. Mm. In addition to that, the volume in the face um, diminishes with time and that causes some sagging and that creates some lines and folds that we don't have when we're younger as well. Speaking of aging and the way the skin droops, what actually are fillers and how do they work within the skin structure? Fillers simply are just a way of revolumizing the face and there are many ways to do it. It's sort of a constantly evolving field and, and HA isn't the only kind of filler. There are others as well, but there that's are many probably the, the most popular yeah. on the market now. What is the average term for an injectable or a filler? The average length of a filler is probably about eight months, but mm -hmm. it varies really from about four to six months to a couple of years. So when we're talking about fillers, people think they get very confused between Botox and fillers. So let's stick with the fillers here. What are some of the areas that are now commonly used on the face? Probably the most common area for the fillers, and this is the first area that had FDA approval, is this area called the nasal labial ah. fold. And that's an area that uh, develops even a lot of times in younger people as, as the cheek comes down or genetically some people have a mm. deep fold. And so this is probably the most popular area, but it's really expanded to other areas of the face too, including the corners of the mouth, the lips, under the eyes, kind of anywhere in this mid-face region is where the fillers are typically used. I think that's fantastic. And this is a great segue. So let's take a look at this interesting graphic that shows the different areas that different fillers are used. Injectables can be used all over the face, but certain products work best on certain areas and purposes. Juvederm Ultra is best used for fine lines around the lips, corners of the mouth and cheeks, while Juvederm Ultra Plus is best for deeper smile lines. Botox is great for getting rid of crow's feet and wrinkles around your forehead. Small amounts can even be injected into the lateral brow for a lifting effect. Radius is only used on areas with deep folds as it is white and can be seen if it is too close to the surface of skin. A common question people ask me out in the street, Dr. Thompson, they get confused between Botox and fillers. Can you just explain to everyone what is the difference between Botox and a filler? And it is a very common question. People tell me all the time, I need some Botox in my lips. <laughs> no, you don't need well, Botox no, in your lips. Well, no, because you won't be able to ask me another question. Right, right. <laughs> so Botox paralyzes muscles temporarily. And so anywhere on the face that we can safely paralyze a muscle and have it soften up a line mm. is an area that we use Botox. Yeah. Common example would be right here for the scowl line or for the squint lines here. I think it's amazing. When, when I was writing my book about these types of procedures, people would say, oh, well, I'm just having the injectables. But I would say, I've always believed in Botox first to stun the muscle and then do the injectable to fill out the skin if you have deep, decreased lines. 
Is that the right terminology someone should be asking you? Yes, I think that's a good way to think about it. Although there are certain areas where you just can't use Botox and only filler will work. But, and but yes, I like to paralyze, especially someone, let's say they have a deep line here, paralyze the muscle first and then fill it in with the filler and, and then you're gonna get the best result. Do you feel, Dr. Thompson, that more and more people are using these as a prevention method than rather having severe skin augmentation work? Yes, I think it's uh, definitely the trend and that, that's what I encourage too because it's a lot easier to get a result and to prevent something from developing than try to correct it after the fact. And I love that. I love that you can do these prevention things first without having to do anything so severe down the track. I've been having it for quite some time now and people think I'm really aged 110 but I'm only 20. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up after the break, we'll meet Kerry and Nisha and watch as Dr. Thompson injects their faces to fill out those fine lines and wrinkles. The following footage contains actual medical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. My name is Carrie Corey and I am 60. Good, now raise your eyebrows. I am gonna do a liquid facelift just because I would like to just refresh some areas. Just lift some areas here, maybe here. Now squint, good. And then we've got the nasal labial folds right here and then this sulcus here, pre gel sulcus. So I'm excited, this is gonna be good. Scowl for me, good, now relax. Okay, little poke. Okay, one more scowl, relax. There are a lot of misconceptions that people have about Botox. One of the first misconceptions people have is that Botox is a poison and shouldn't be put into your body. The truth is that Botox is actually a medication and like other medication can cause damage if injected into the wrong place or the wrong amount. However, this does not make it dangerous to use. Just make sure it's being injected by a trained professional. Another misconception is that Botox can make you look plastic or unnatural. I agree, but that is if you go to extremes and have more Botox than that is recommended. When used properly, Botox can give you a natural and relaxed look. I'm going to put some filler in for these fine lines along your glabella and the crow's feet. We already did the Botox and that'll help with the muscle contraction, but because they're a little bit deeper, you could also benefit from having a little bit of filler right in those lines. And for that, we're going to use a filler called Bellatero and it's a relatively new filler, but it's intended for these really fine lines, and so that's uh, where I like to inject it. There are a lot of little pokes for this filler. So now this line that was, was really deep before is a lot less visible with this Bellatero in there. And between that and the Botox, it should pretty much go away completely. I'm making you a pin cushion today, so I hope you're okay. I start seeing the lines, you know, especially right here where it bothers me the most and around my eyes and stuff. So I don't want those lines to tell everybody really how old I am. Okay, good. So that really took those lines out. And it really helped a lot on this side with those crow's feet lines. So again, we can just see how that line that was deeper there now, you really can't see it anymore. I would like to look like I had at least two weeks of a good sleep and maybe went to Mexico for a vacation and just hoping to get rid of some of this right here, mostly, for me. And that's mostly what I'm interested in today. So now, Carrie, we've done your Botox. Uh, we've put some Bellatero in these fine lines of your crow's feet and the glabella. And now I'm going to put some Radius in this cheek area like I was talking about to help with this nasal labial fold, okay? All right, sounds good. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. This will give you a little bit more prominence to your cheekbones, but it'll also tend to lift this up a little bit. 
Mm, that would be good. We see more and more of this every day. People are feeling younger, I think. Everybody's feeling younger. They say 60's the new 40. So why look 60 if you have a chance to look a few years younger? Okay, Carrie, we've finished your Botox and uh, some filler, and I'm just gonna kind of point out some of the things that we've done on this side of your face that I think uh, have made a really nice difference. So we put some radius over here and that helped to lift this up and soften this fold. And we can see that this fold is softer and less deep than it is on this side. Um, I also put some filler right in this fold. The other thing I did was I added some filler just right through here. And so instead of kind of having a little bit of a deflated look to your cheek, here it's fuller and more youthful. Um, and it almost looks like it's been lifted. This side looks a little bit saggier, but it hasn't, and this is a great way to do something non-surgical that gives almost a surgical um, result. Um, there's a little bit of redness from the pokes, from the injections. I also put some filler right down here, and so we can see there's a depression here, and here we have a smoother line across here. I also filled in here so we have less of a depression between this cheek or the jowl area and the chin right in there. And then we've also added a little bit of volume to your lips, just a conservative amount to give it a little bit more fullness and give you a little bit more of a feminine appearance. I guess my best advice is to do something for yourself. We as women, we're always doing things for other people, for our family, for our friends, for our neighbors. Why not do something just for you to make yourself look and feel better about yourself? Coming up after the break, you're going to see my great friend Nisha and watch as Dr. Thompson gets rid of those pesky fine lines and wrinkles. The following footage contains actual medical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. I'm Nisha DeGaring and I'm the host of Good Things Utah and I also host The Daily Dish, which is part of Midday. Everybody has their thing that maybe even other people don't see, but you right. see right. when you look in the mirror. And I am such an eyebrow raiser. I think while we're talking, I'm like, really? Really? They're always up. Yeah. It's part of my expression. Right. And so I'm seeing these lines right here just form. And I don't know if they're deep, but they I notice them. They're starting That's to, what to I be see. visible. I'm getting to that stage where I look in the mirror and go, that's not how I feel. How come that's how I look? What's going on in the mirror? So. I don't know, time marching across your face is never a fun thing to watch happen. So getting a little freshen up sounds good. I want you to look like yourself. And so that's why I, I'm fairly conservative. We start a little bit uh, with a little bit and then we go from there. So we're gonna do a little Botox, a little filler, and make sure you like it before we do anything more. Let's try it. Okay. Try it, especially with the, <laughs> let's get rid of these guys. Okay. Okay. Someone said in the lobby, are you scared? No, no, I'm not scared. I'm not scared of trying something new, trying something that, um, I don't know, if I, and again, I mean, maybe I should have tried this years ago and, and this could have been preventative. Now I'm doing a little bit of maintenance and maybe down the road a little bit more. Can you raise your eyebrows for me? Okay, relax. So I have um, them raise the eyebrow just so I can see exactly where the muscle is and that tells me exactly where I want to inject. Okay, raise again and relax. So we're injecting about eight units of Botox here, which is a very conservative amount. I don't feel pressure being in TV to look younger than everybody behind me, but I, I do look in a camera every single day for my job. And so I see those subtle changes that maybe other women don't see and, and I don't think I'm superficial. I don't think I've ever been someone that was like, wait, what's that? But when it's staring at you all the time, you go, oh, oh, where did that one come from? Is that from scowling at my daughter too much? Maybe. So now we're going to do the crow's feet. Now can you squint for me, Nisha? That's good, now relax, perfect. And then I'll usually put a little bit over here because that tends to give you a little bit of natural brow elevation, which is a really nice feature and maybe just a little bit more here. The older I get, the more I'm happy for everyone to look how they look. And I don't say, how could you? I say, how'd you do it? And I am, no, not intimidated, 
impressed and proud of other women that own it, whatever it is, whatever plastic surgery, whatever injections, whatever not you're getting, I'm proud of women that own it. Okay, so we're about to inject your lips here with some Juvederm. Just don't move, that's the important part. There's gonna be about maybe three or four on each lip. I'm to the age where I feel confident about me and my choices and my decisions. And if this makes me feel good about me, then so be it. I don't care. Like this is something I'm doing for me, not for TV, not for my husband. I want to look in the mirror and go, this is the best you you can be. That's what I'm doing. All right, Nisha, now we've done your lips and I'm going to move over to the cheek area and these area you called the parentheses to get some of these fine lines and we'll be using Juvederm for this. I am not planning to look like Joan Rivers at any time during this procedure. So <laughs> that's not what I want. I don't need to look perfectly perfect. I don't think that's real. And we can debate, sit here and say, what is real? You're actually getting a little something done. My skin ain't 18 anymore, but if I can get a little bit closer to that and not have that tight, mm, I wanna get there. For this, I usually use um, what's called a cannula, and it's okay. not a needle, That's and fine. that will greatly reduce the chance of you getting a bruise. And it'll feel different. You'll kind of feel it sliding under your skin, but there's a little bit of resistance because it's not sharp. You can actually see it fill the area as it goes Really? Down. Yeah. Now, if you look in the mirror, see how this side oh. looks a little hollow oh, wow. and this side looks like it's a little bit filled out right That's there. It's, and it just, wow. you don't have that kind of depression there. Holy cow, look at that. It just totally filled that in. <gasps> yeah, so I, I really like it right oh, here. I, I really like, like it right there. That all day long. That's awesome. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the cannula. <laughs> wow. So right here we can see it's just filled in as opposed to this side where there's still a shadow right there. So it just kind of creates a more even contour from the lower lid down to the cheek. Oh my gosh. A lot better, don't you think? So much better. Yeah. Wow. And, and like I said, we might we might add some more, but okay. we'll give it a few weeks. I think this is a good place to start. It does too. It looks too. so good. And it softened that thing. I actually didn't put any in there. Sometimes that'll give you a little bit of a bump, but I don't think you need it because of what we what put in What you did with the lip. lip. So. You don't need it. No. Yeah. Coming up after the break, Kerry and Nisha will be joining Dr. Thompson and myself in the studio so we can check out their final results. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and join the Younger You conversation. Be sure to check out the Younger You website to watch full episodes of the show. Stay up to date on the Younger You challenge and get useful tips and tricks to help you achieve the Younger You. Welcome back. Well, I've got Kerry here to talk about her liquid facelift. But first, Kerry, these are your before pictures. When you see your face like this on screen, what do you see? I see a woman that is in her 60s and looks it. I don't feel my age, so I definitely don't want to look my age. And Dr. Thompson, when we look at the before picture, why did you decide on a liquid facelift? And what does that mean for people out there watching? A liquid facelift isn't actually a lift, it's a revolumizing procedure. And right. we use that term because it actually does give a little bit of lift to the face, but it's a non-surgical procedure that is intended to rejuvenate the face. Okay, Kerry, let's have a look at your after picture now. When I see this, I do not see a woman in her 60s. What do you see? I see a woman that looks a little younger that mm -hmm. maybe looks um, how she feels, the age that she feels on the inside. What age do you feel on the inside? Oh, 20. <laughs> you do? <laughs> yeah, we exactly. all should feel 20. I think mentally, Dr. Thompson, most people feel younger than they actually are. Why are these type of procedures important to someone like Kerry? They're important because the way that we perceive ourselves has a lot to do with our self-confidence, mm -hmm. it has a lot to do with our mood, and the way that others perceive us has a lot to do with how we feel about ourselves as well. I think it's important, Kerry, why the liquid facelift and why didn't you go to the next step, which is a facelift? I wanted something that didn't 
have a lot of downtime at this point in my life, and it's supposed to last for a lot longer, the Voluma. Well, funny you say that. I want to talk to you about Voluma. What is it, and why is it such a great product that's being used now? Voluma is another of the HA fillers that we right. discussed before, but it, it has a, a larger particle size, and so it's it's just broken down more slowly and lasts longer. But the consequence of that is that it, it can only be injected deeply, and so it, it can't be used for superficial fine lines. And how often are you expecting Kerry to come in and have what we now call a liquid facelift? I don't expect that we'll do all of that again. We'll just kind of do little touch-ups along the way as we see that she develops a deficiency. Okay. In just a moment, we'll be joined by Nisha. But first, let's take a look at some of the benefits of these type of procedures. The first benefit of a liquid facelift is that it produces immediate results. It is also a great procedure because it is performed in an office with only local anaesthetic and produces little to no bruising. Another benefit of this procedure is that it offers many possibilities including softening of fine lines, lip enhancement and cheek augmentation. Dr. Thompson and I have been joined by my gorgeous co-host Nisha from Good Things Utah. Let's check out her before pictures of what she had done. Dr. Thompson, what were some of Nisha's main concerns here? Some of um, the things that we talked about with Nisha are just, she's just starting to develop some fine lines around her eyes um, and in her skin, around her mouth, around her lips, and um, also just a little bit of darkness under the eyes like we talked about with, with Nisha, Carrie. do you feel you just started to develop them or you developed them many years ago? <laughs> It's from working with you. I have this wrinkle and that wrinkle and this wrinkle. No, you know what? I. I'm okay looking 41, I just want to look my best 41. And I was starting to see wrinkles that were deepening and that when I'd sleep at night and wake up in the morning and look in the mirror, they weren't going away. They were okay. getting permanent. So, and Dr. Thompson and I talked about this. Um, when I came in, you said, what do you see? And I said, my forehead. My forehead, I've never taken the hair off my forehead. I've always had bangs because I felt nervous about how deep those lines were. I'm completely confident now. This is like, I mean, I sweep it back and <laughs> yeah. I love it. It's for me and it's, it's not about look at me, I'm 25. It's look at me, it's the best 41 I can be. Well, the thing I, I wanted to bring up, Nisha, and I think it was important that we discuss this. I, Nisha had very fine skin, doesn't she? And it does age very right. quickly. And by doing the injectables, how does that stretch out the skin more for someone who has finer skin? Yeah, for someone that has really fine skin like Nisha, she's more likely to get those fine lines early. And yeah. so you add a little bit of volume and they're not as visible and they don't come as, as quickly. And also the Botox helps, helps with that tremendously. Yeah. What would you say to people out there that are wanting to have this done? They've seen you and they've gone, she looks really good. What do you say to them? I would say there is an individual relationship with you and your skin and mm. your body and where you are in that relationship. And I was in a place where I was ready to do a little yeah. something. And maybe you're ready for more than that. Maybe you're ready to do a little something in a year. Yeah. But it's about where you are. And I'm in a good place. Good. Like I'm happy with this place. Good. Nisha, thank you so much. Dr. Thompson, thank you, thank you. for allowing Nisha to come in and oh, do this on my you. behalf. Thank you so I really much. appreciate thank it. You. Fine lines and wrinkles are something that everyone must worry about at some point in their lives. Dermal fillers and Botox are a great way not only of correcting these problem areas, but they are also great for preventing them. For more information about the show, please visit our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you next week. Next week on The Younger You, it's Makeover Day. Watch as we give Teresa a top-to-toe makeover and give you some helpful tips at home. The Younger You set provided by Madison McCord Interiors.